Alright, what is up you guys, and of course, as always, welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better? And what better way than actually talk about a matchup that has yet to become one, the Panzer Birds, Skarmory vs. Corviknight. And just going right out the bat, as Skarmory is not a part of the game yet, it all gotta be theoretical, however, due to a leak through Pokemon Home, we know which moves that Skarmory gets that are of relevance. So with that in mind, when we go over the move pool, we are gonna show you something it learns that are of relevance. It actually did get better this generation. But then again, Corviknight, which is pretty much the poster boy of OU, represents just that, the very best that is this type of combination. Flying and Steel is among the best. Last generation, Celesteela was arguably one of the best Pokemons in the game and one of the better, if not the best, League Pokemon in the game. Corviknight and Skarmory, however, are quite alike, which is why I really want to talk about this matchup, as there really aren't anything like Corviknight, nor has it been anything like Skarmory until now, and we only get a real chance to talk about them in this matchup. So, like I said, it's speculative, but at the same time, they are roughly the same, and Skarmory is roughly gonna stay the same as it's been since generation 2 and 4. So, with that in mind, I'm gonna introduce the Pokemon introduced first, which is, of course, Skarmory. So before I talk about Skarmory, I do want to recognize that the Flying Seal combination, what is it that makes this typing so good? Well, in immunity in ground and poison helps, stronger resist in bugging grass helps even more, a resistance in dragon, fairy, flying, normal, psychic and steel, and only weak to electric and fire. Basically, this is a very very splashable typing which resolves other Pokemon's issues quite nicely, and if you want something to balance this Pokemon out when it comes defensively, one could actually say that a ground and rock typing solves a lot, and a ground and water type solves absolutely a lot. Uh, that said though, it really does help that all the flying and steel combination are by this video, all three of them are super bulky. Um, so th that clearly helps. Uh, when it comes to distribution of stats with Skarmory itself, well, it's quite straightforward, isn't it? It doesn't have the biggest HP stat or its special defense. It's actually on the low side at, you know, 65 HP and 70 in special defense. Special attack at 40, yeah, looks about right. But everything else is really, really decent. 18 attack means it has a usable physical prowess. Defense at 140, yeah, this guy clearly takes hits. And a speed at 70, which for a bulky Pokemon is quite speedy. Uh, when it comes to its abilities, we talk about very, very key things here. K9, for example, is necessarily not the best ability for it. However, the other ones are quite nice. Sturdy allows you to always survive a hit for a full. Basically, a focus sash and weak armor makes you... Well, when you hit by a physical move, you will lose your defense by one, but you raise your speed by two. And this combination can be quite great with a more offensive variant of Skarmory where... 70 base speed is definitely fast, but it absolutely can become faster. And the exchange of be losing a bit of defense might actually not be that bad. So overall, Skarmory's stat revision quite straightforward, but what really defines Skarmory is its defensive and offensive utilities in its move pool. So when it comes to Skarmory's overall move pool, and while in this one is from Generation 7, there are a few aspects to consider here. This Pokemon this generation got Body Press. This will absolutely give Covenite a run for its money, as this is something that offensively make Skarmory very, very offensively capable due to that real high 140 base defense. Besides that, when it comes to its stab distribution, where it likes a Brave Bird and Real Peck and Iron Head Steel Wing, and a few fair filler moves that I would never necessarily consider them, but it do get the likes of uh, Night Slash and Payback, which, like I said, they are fair at best. Uh, besides that, we have Stealth Rocks and Defog, which is a supportive asset that really makes Skarmory quite nice to use as a whole, as it does allow you to not only set up rocks, but also allow yourself to get rid of rocks, and you always want a recovery variant of Defog Pokemon, so of course this Pokemon gets Roost too, and that is in very, very, a lot of ways invaluable. Uh, it also has spikes, which is really good for it, as it, like I said, this is a stacker Pokemon that really has defensive utilities like Defog. Um, and we have also setup moves, we have Agility and Autonomize, so pick your poison basically, we have Curse, and we have uh, Soul Stats and Iron Defense. 
So it wouldn't surprise me if Skarmory in the future here will do a similar defensive role like a Covenite and go for the R defensive variant and Roost or in Axis I guess one could consider Curse also. Um, so you know he doesn't have bulk up so he clearly loses his potential speed gap but overall Skarmory is one of those phenomenal Pokemon that never really in singles go out of styles so it was very very cool to see a Pokemon such as um, Covenite be introduced who have a similar well access to same type of moves and uh, one thing that really stands out that I forgot to tell is also that Skarmory has taunt that is incredible also gets the likes of Tailwind and Toxic that have a defensive setting from capable but thanks to Skarmory this generation getting the body press also it does kind of slide in to Covenite's viability which is good for it as we do get a very fair comparison of two Pokemon that are absolutely not alike but overall I mean if Skarmory gets reintroduced to this generation it's gonna be just as good as it was before and um, that that means that whatever it did before it does now just as well because the meta is not allowing anything else but this to work and Skarmory is among the best defensive Pokemon in the game and will remain just that. So Corviknight, the absolute beast of this generation and well people do fear it because it is one of those Pokemon that just soak hits very very well. Now it should go without saying Theoretically, Covenite is bulkier than uh, Skarmory, but it is also slower than Skarmory. So 98 base HP, which is really alright, definitely on the weaker side defensively at 105, and 85 special defense, so clearly especially defensively more active. Also the same thing here, it has slight advantage over Skarmory's attack, and has 87 over 80, and I also have a small special attack raise of 53 over 40, so mm -hmm, yeah, mm, not, not, not a lot. And then the speed, 67 over 70 on Skarmory. So overall, it's offensively more capable and defensively more active, but it is on the slower side. On its abilities, with the likes of Mirror Armor, Pressure and Unnerve, all three of them being actually really viable, Mirror Armor actually reflects stat degrees from your opponent to them instead. So let's say if something intimidates you, you will actually not get that intimidate and bounce it back much like magic bounce now i think of it um, besides that we also have the likes of uh, pressure which is usually its most common move and has a lot to do with that pressure just makes you use two pp over one pp and that could be very annoying depending on what team you face off against and corvalite is clear defensive enough to abuse that situation and then you have unnerve which makes sure that your opposing pokemon cannot pop their berry so something like um, um, Belladrum uh, Snorlax will not be able to capitalize on this berry. And overall, I, I like that asset. It is something, depending on which set of Covenant you want to capitalize on, it should be able to do really well no matter what. I myself prefer Pressure, but I think both Mirror Armor and Unnerve has their reasons to be used. Quite frankly, Mirror Armor in the right hands can be just invaluable. So yeah, with all that said, all we need to talk about besides its viability is of course Covenite's move pool itself, which, as stated before, are very very similar to Skarmory's. So what can I say about Corvanite's move pool? Well, I think I already said it once already, but I said it again, Skarmory. Just Skarmory. There are just no other way of covering it, as it does get like in setup agility and web bulk up instead of the contrast to the likes of uh, Curse or Sword Stance, and uh, we also have Iron Defense. This Pokemon also gets body press and is a Pokemon that I think really defined that set with bulk up. We also have Raybird and Drill Pack, so depending on what you're going to go with, this is a fair combination. And we have Iron Head and Steel Wing, and also have Setup Moves in Nasp, but I forgot about that, you're never going to use that. 53 Spell Attack and that plus 2, yeah, that's not going to scare anybody. Uh, and also Taunt, <laughs> just, it, they are so alike. The thing I would say that are different between these two is that while um, Covenite has the Fog and Roost, it does lack Spikes and Stealth Rocks, which does make the defensive utilities of Skarmory a bit more on the valuable side. However, um, Covenite gets U-Turn and Power Trip. Power Trip really helps this Pokemon, as Power Trip to allow this Pokemon to hit really hard if you get to set up freely with something like Bulk Up, as it does boost. For every stat boost, you get 20 base power extra. So basically, if you go for free bulk ups, I don't believe anything want to take that hit ever. And you can go with a, just a soul power trip variant with to get a realize of a bulk up and potentially something else to just boost yourself and roost. Um, so overall, really, really good move. And uh, I think U-turn is going to be 
even more valuable moving forward with something like Magnus Zombie to do this game. As right now, U-Turn and having a ways of utility is invaluable for any Pokémon with a Steel typing. And what do you know? Um, by the Flying and Steel combinations like uh, Celesteela and Skarmory, Corviknight is the only Pokémon being able to do just that and get out of a very, very nasty situation versus Magnuson, which is going to come out this June. And Magnuson can trap Steel types. And what do you know? Magnuson are defined by actually trapping Skarmory. So Corviknight could be in a very, very similar situation and has the potential to possibly get out of it. That's kind of cool and quite niche if you ask me, but definitely something I consider invaluable. Another thing that Corviknight has over Skarmory are dual screen. While you don't really see it, I can see its viability in a league asset and you no, know, in combination with already saying a reflected light screen together with U-turn and Roost, that could be one of those very niche <laughs> screen setters and just get out is really good and of course it has tailwind so overall they are so much alike with a few differentiations between them but overall you know if you showed me serving these pokemon paper to paper i would not see the difference until it went to the fine detail so for me this matchup is so kind of tough to dictate which one i think is defined as the potential better pokemon between these two because I think they have their merits, and I think their matchups are roughly the same, yet they can do different things about their matchup to come out of a bad spot. And it, I would say it comes down to personal preference and, you know, the matchup that allowed it to work. Um, for example, if you are more of a defensive player and you want hazards and uh, want to capitalize on that set skill set with, you know, Whirlwind and Raw, Skarmory has to be your Pokemon. If you want to be pivoting or, you know, bulking up and have a more of of a setup variant and a more offensive capable Pokemon and Corviknight should be your Pokemon. However, I do believe Skarmory can do defensive role as well as Corviknight, but it lacks the defensive utilities of getting out a bad matchup. So uh, one would kind of consider, like I said, more defensive, then you want to go for Skarmory and more offensive, you want to go with Corviknight. Um, I really want to have to define, depending on what player you are, that is your winner. However, if I were to take a standard myself, what I prefer I would lean towards Corviknight. And the reason being is just the defensive responses is just better for me as you know U-turn is huge, absolutely. Defensive utilities and screen, that's huge also. And uh, I deem both of these Pokemon really defensively capable, but I would say that Corviknight are better at replicating what Skarmory do than Skarmory would be of replicating what Corviknight is doing. That said, I absolutely see both sides of the argument, then I'll actually just say if somebody of a different opinion says Skarmory is better, I could see why. I wouldn't disagree. I absolutely think this is all about a personal preference, and we're talking about one of the best defensive typings in the game, in probably one of the best defensive stat distribution Pokemon in the game. It's, it's very, very weird to talk about these two Pokemon. As it seems, they are not too far apart at all and they do in what they're doing with their type combination phenomenally there are no pokemons like this and um, i mean celesteela was the one that actually stood out and seen this role and defined replicated in another new pokemon it's cool i love it <laughs> but yeah with all that said i really hope you guys enjoyed this episode and of course do tell me what you guys think of Covenite and skarmory and which one do you prefer and uh, with all that said, thank you for watching and join us next episode for this matchup.